Hello, uh, sorry to jump in here, but I wanted to tell you about something really big. AcmeScience.com is running a Kickstarter. What this would mean is that for the year 2013, if this Kickstarter is funded, there will be a new episode of Acme Science News Now every other week. That's right, 26 brand new episodes for the year 2013, guaranteed, if the Kickstarter is funded. So please, head on over to Kickstarter and search for Acme Science, where you can find out about all the cool pledge level rewards and everything like that, or head over to acmescience.com where you will find a link to the Kickstarter. So now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Acme Science News Now. I am your host, Samuel Hansen, and I, like almost everyone I knew growing up, was obsessed with dinosaurs. Because they're the greatest, and so you can imagine my excitement when I heard that a new species had been discovered, and then my growing excitement when I found out that I was going to be able to interview someone about it. And so... On the show today is Dr. David Evans of the Royal Ontario Museum. Dr. Evans, welcome to Acme Science News Now. Thanks a lot, Samuel. So, uh, can you tell me what uh, the Xenoceratops is? Well, the Xenoceratops is a new species of horned dinosaur. And uh, it would have looked a lot like Triceratops. In fact, it's one of the oldest members of the large-bodied family of horned dinosaurs that includes Triceratops. Uh, it was about the size of a rhinoceros, so a little bit smaller than Triceratops. Uh, it would have had a long tail out the back end and up front. It would have had a parrot-like beak, which it would have used to crop vegetation. Uh, but what makes Xenoceratops different from uh, Triceratops is that it has a very characteristic uh, arrangement of hooks and horns coming off the back of its neck shield. And it's that arrangement of hooks and horns off of the neck shield or the frill that's really the calling card for a particular ceratopsian species. And um, the, uh, the, the arrangement of those horns off Xenoceratops is, uh, is unlike that we'd uh, seen before. So uh, we felt that it deserved its own species. So how did you end up, uh, you know, discovering uh, this, this dinosaur? What, what went into that process? Well, Xenoceratops has... a an interesting story of discovery. Uh, it was, the bones of Xenoceratops actually were discovered about 50 years ago in 1958 by paleontologist Juan Langston Jr. He was working for the Geologic Survey of Canada at the time, and he found the bones in Chin Coulee in southern Alberta near the town of Foremost. And he wrapped up the bones in plaster of Paris and burlap, and he sent them back to the museum in Ottawa. Uh, where they basically sat for the last uh, four or five decades until uh, Michael Ryan from the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and myself uh, found some really unusual pieces, uh, fragments of the frill uh, in a drawer. And we realized uh, that uh, these were some of the oldest ceratopsid bones um, that were discovered to date. And so we got quite interested in them. And at that point, we then enlisted Kieran Shepard at the Canadian Museum of Nature to go through the field notes and go through the museum records and see if uh, there was any more of the specimen. And uh, we got lucky. Uh, it turns out that there, there were two big blocks um, that were on the shelves that hadn't been opened since Juan collected them. And um, lucky for us, they contained most of the back of the skull of this dinosaur with the characteristic neck shield. So when we started opening those jackets and preparing the bones out, we saw that um, unique arrangement of hooks and horns coming off the frill, and we knew right away that uh, Juan had discovered a brand new species of horned dinosaur. So you mentioned uh, that this is a very old example of a uh, ceratopsid. What what does that uh, kind of tell you about uh, dinosaurs, specifically dinosaurs in that area of Alberta? Yeah, well, Xenoceratops uh, is one of the oldest members of, uh, of the family that includes Triceratops. It's the oldest member from Canada and actually pretty close to the oldest one in the world. And it's giving us scientific insights into the origin of this major group of dinosaurs 
that you know are, many people are familiar with popularly, but they're very important ecologically through the last 20 million years or so of the Cretaceous. And uh, what Xenoceratops actually tells us is that um, the complex pattern of multiple large spikes and hooks um, that basically characterize and are taken to extremes in later ceratopsids, it seems that that arrangement uh, of really spiky heads evolved um, earlier than we thought. Uh, but we still have a lot to learn about ceratopsid origin. So Xenoceratops has pushed back these complex spiky frills, uh, but at the same time um, has made us realize we still have a lot to learn about, uh, about ceratopsid origin, so we, we continue looking in the field. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about the Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project? Sure. The uh, Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project um, is, a, is a field research project that uh, Dr. Michael Ryan and I started about eight years ago or so. And it cor it, it searching rocks in Southern Alberta that correspond to a big gap in our fossil record. These are rocks that are older than the well-studied uh, fossils from Drumheller area and Dinosaur Provincial Park and Montana. And uh, they actually correspond to not just a gap in our record of dinosaurs in North America, but uh, in dinosaurs in the world in general. And this gap actually corresponds to uh, a kind of a hot zone in dinosaur evolution where we saw the, the major families like Tyrannosauridae and Ceratopsidae and Hadrosauridae uh, originate. And so we're focusing on these rocks uh, to give us more insight into the origin of these major groups, as well as um, push our knowledge of the diversity of these dinosaurs back in time uh, a little bit further so we can get a better understanding of the faunal changes uh, and how they correlate with environmental changes leading up to the Cretaceous uh, tertiary extinction event. So you're essentially talking about looking into the origins of all of the favorite things from my childhood. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we've actually been pretty successful today. Uh, Xenoceratops is just one of eight new dinosaurs that we've found. And um, we're working on a number of them, including the oldest pachycephalosaur from North America. And uh, these are exciting finds that uh, I, you know, I hope to be able to tell you more about in the future. So we've, we're, we're, we're pretty busy. Well, I, I would love to hear more about them in the future. If you want to hear uh, read more about this, you can check out the October 2012 issue of the Canadian Journal of Earth Sciences. Uh, David Evans, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Sam.